welcome to a new Harry's Garage and today's car is the Bentley Continental GTC behind me introduced this year 2018 um, to replace the original model that came out I can't believe it was that long ago but 2003 that's 15 years in production the original Conti GT did that's twice the life cycle of a normal model just shows you how successful the model was for Bentley I mean in the end they sold apparently around 65,000 Continental GTs of the first version so a real crucial model um, for Bentley and to put that in perspective there's approximately for every Aston DB9 sold there was four Continental GTs sold why was it so successful and what have they done to this brand new car which they do say is very new compared to them it's not just an update let's go and have a closer look now, first thing to um, look at is the design they've had a thorough rethink of the Conti GT along the same lines it still has those powerful haunches at the rib um, but the nose is different um, it has a wider grille lower slung those headlights are just works of art they're uh, like a diamond pattern when you look at them um, led lights as standard on this car and this wide chrome grill um, and the deep intake underneath um, incidentally I'm, I'm surprised that it's sort of all that chrome around the grill and then the black sort of, they're actually plastic they don't look very upmarket the actual grills below the main grill below the number plate but uh, it has presence this car i think they've done a terrific job and the sharpness of the lines on it are just extraordinary i know vw are very proud of that i've dropped the windows on it because i just love pillarless coupes like this and i think it just shows off the line of the car beautifully this is a optional color this um, ruby uh, red i think it sets it off very well but just look at that line on that rear horse and just how that crease line is just razor sharp really good uh, metal work that this car is all aluminium as well apart from the i think the boot is a um i don't want to call it plastic i don't know what else to call it really but uh, not aluminium but it's yeah a very good redesign everybody who sees it says god that's a striking car there's a little hint of um, audi a7 about it but i'll forgive it that because it has presence and it's a dramatically better styled than the original conti gt it had a slightly blobby nature around the rear i always thought this one no this um, very stylized lights how they've dropped the rear window sort of has a false rear window that goes into the boot gives it a great look and that very distinctive brake light just along the rear window all in all on design absolute top job looks a million dollars okay let's have a look inside now i'm going to give you a full tour of the interior when i actually go to drive it but it's something i just want to show you now um, when you open the door you've got this tread right and bentley in big bold letters in red sometimes when i open the door it's in blue i'm not quite sure what's going on about that but this is a two plus two so i'm interested can i sit behind me so that's my driving position there i'm going to get in the back of course it's all motorized i'll put that forward motors forward and i'm going to get in oh, that's not bad put that down and seat motors forward oh it hits my knee and it's just yeah there you go so it actually will just touch your knees and just go forward about an inch i'm 6162 i'm a little snug in here but i do fit i can just feel a little bit of touch in there it's not bad actually it's better so much better than the previous uh, conti gt they've stretched the wheelbase on this car and it's and it counts it, it does given has given it a bit more interior room right let's have a look at the business end let's have a look at the engine and there we go this w12 engine that um, bentley has made its own in this configuration this new spec and it's really changed they've looked at firing orders and it can shut down cylinders all sorts of things it produces six liters it says there produces 626 horsepower and 900 newton meters of torque which is 664 foot of uh, torque enormous thumping power unit um, what's quite nice is actually this is part of an auction pack's got an uh, actual metal oil filler when i have a look around in here i can't actually see a dipstick i don't think it possesses a dipstick i think that's all electronic and what they've managed to do the engineers have somehow managed to get this pack 150 mil further back in the chassis for, for handling obviously and they also have this 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 very distinctive brace this cast aluminium here brace between the front um, struts lot of work in here i can see that the owner would basically never look under here the only thing he's got is a washer bottle up there and that's it so that's all you see of the engine now let's have a look at the back it's quite a trick feature at the back 
Okay, we're at the rear. I like the way the screen actually ends there, but the, and the boot starts from there, but they've made this a black panel just to fool your eye and to think it's a bigger screen. This panel here is a rear spoiler that automatically deploys at about 75 miles an hour thereabouts. You can control it manually underneath as well. But there's a trick feature on it here. If I just do this, up comes the boot. It's got just a control to open the boot. And I love the way the rear lights sort of tuck into the boot like that. Reasonable sized boot. I am not checked it here actually. What have we got in here? Oh, just a battery and underneath there. And a, um, yeah, some foam to fill it up. Um, no way of closing it apart from pressing a button. And there you go. So that gives you a little idea about the Bentley. Let's take it outside, take it for a drive. Yeah, quite a place in here. Um, really impressive interior on this. First of all, the car hands you a seat belt very conveniently. And then you're presented with this. It's all lit up. Um, LCD readout on the screen, typical um, screen you see uh, these days. And to start it, I've a central button to start it. And there we go, and the theatre begins. First thing that pops up is the revolving uh, navigation screen, the central screen. If I just turn the radio down a little bit, there we go. I love I, just so many features to talk you through here, but what a design it is. Um, smaller wheel, this 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 car, actually I've got the option pack here, which I'm gonna read out from because it's because there's a lot of stuff on this car. Recommended uh, list for this car out of the showroom, 159,100 pounds in the UK. Total option cost to this car, £43,085, making a grand total of £202,185. Now you don't have to spend that much, that's typical of press cars, they load them up so then we, we can show you the options that are available on, on a car like this. And the key ones on this one are extended paint range because it's this um, Rubino Red is the colour on this car, £4,500. Mulliner driving specification, alternative wheel, that's um, £8,095. What on earth does that add? So that adds, must add quite a lot. One of the driver spec is 21 inch wheels, uh, quilted to seats, this beautiful diamond pattern and then a, a sort of tiny stitches all the way around. Over 700 stitches in each diamond apparently, uh, according to the press pack. Um, according to seats, door casings and rear quarters uh, diamond in, in diamond in diamond embroidery, indented uh, leather um, um, headlining, sorry I'm, I'm losing my space, sports pedals, that's metal pedals, metal fill, uh, fuel filler cap and that metal oil cap we saw before. Um, touring specification on here is lane assist, ad adaptive cruise control, um, night vision, yeah it's this night vision, you just turn the dash and you can just see at night and um, anything that's sort of alive, I saw birds popping out of um, hedgerows when I was on the way to Goodwood yesterday and things like that. Um, head up display, um, adjustable seats, um, front, uh, seat comfort specification, is adjustable side bolsters and then the ventilation and massage, etc. Um, city specification is another uh, option. How much is city specification? I'd, I'd have that on my car. Right, so, um, that is, oh, that's not too bad actually. Well, 3,960. No, it's not, yeah, it's quite a lot of money, isn't it? So I apologise, ignore that. Mood lighting specification, £1,490. It goes on. Anyway, the city spec. Um, amazing cameras I'm going to show you in a minute, uh, pedestrian warning, reversing traffic, that um, dimming uh, mirrors, all that sort of thing. Um, yeah, amazing amount of options you can have on one of these cars, but what it presents you with is just a remarkable thing. Now the screen in front of me, I have the two dials at the moment, I can change that, I can have a trip like that, I haven't got anything set in the navigation, otherwise I could have the whole thing as a map. But this screen, this rotates. I'm, uh, one of my bugbears with in current interior car design is they always have a central screen and it dominates everything. Not so on the Bentley. If this is a, now this is another option. I'll get my crib sheet again. Bentley rotating display, four thousand seven hundred pound extra. This one, and if I press screen, it'll do that, and suddenly up will pop three conventional dials with a compass in the middle, which is slightly confusing because it, oh, the needle never moves and then the compass moves around, sort of other way around to a normal uh, compass. I can see that it's 22 degrees out there, there's a, a temperature gauge there and a stopwatch, we haven't quite worked out how to power up, but that was all very nice. 
and then when you park up of an evening oh, I can't make it do it can I do it another one there's another okay when I park up well, I'll stop it now that all folds away and it does that wonderful rotate and then the line just sort of finishes and like it has no screen at all there you go i mean the the button count it's, it is beautifully done it's slightly confusing when you first get in um but the overall impression is i've not been in an interior like as good as this and that's i suppose why you pay nearly two hundred thousand pounds for this car okay now the final thing i want to show you on this screen is when you select reverse you get the cameras up and then you get this bird's eye view which i find particularly useful but what is really impressive in this car is how quickly it will change so i'm going forward i have a forward camera there i can see around me i've got a bullard there i've got little terriers that love to run around the car i can spot them on this it's really clever and i like the way it holds um, the forward camera open i get reverse and i instantly changes um, the camera there's no pause no nothing it's in real time as, as quickly as I change that lever as quickly as the cameras change not all cars are like that but this one is very impressive you'll probably shout at me but my golf does the same well, all I can say is a mighty impressive system anyway what this car is all about is how it drives so let's go to some of my favorite roads and you'll rejoin me when we're just gonna test it a bit more dynamics of what this car is all about okay in comfort mode the air springs as well change and it's more relaxed and the damping um, and it's a very good wafter, as you'd imagine this sort of car to be. There is always that hint of that urge from that engine. Um, it always keeps the revs low. In general use, you will rarely break through 2,000 RPM. I should also say it's an eight-speed um, dual-clutch transmission. This is not your conventional tour converter that previous Cotter GT has. It's still a ZF unit, but it's dual-clutch transmission. And they've done that because it's 900 Newton meters. And at the moment, there isn't really a um, torque converter gearbox that can cope with that amount of torque. Dual-clutch transmission can. But if I have a little criticism, it's not quite a good at wafting and that stop start in city it does get caught between the uh, first or second gear and you hear it just do a little shuffle that's common to all dual clutch transmissions i've driven but that's where a torque converter is king but then if you want the dynamic drive and an instant crack of a gear change um, that's where you go for dual clutch oh as i'm about to find out right i'm going to take it out of um comfort i'm going to put it in bentley and then no, i'm going to swap it around to sport the other fun thing with sport as soon as I touch the paddle on the steering wheel, I'm in manual mode, and it's low geared, um, which is one of my bugbears again, but second gear is a very usable gear. Um, it really helps acceleration, it helps this car hit 3.1 to 60. And oh, this, this is those gear changes going. That, that is pretty impressive. So this, this step off. I saw this car has been um, figured by a few magazines. They're getting to 8.1 to 100. This car weighs 2.2 uh, tons, perhaps a bit more. 8.1 to 100 puts it in supercar league. Quicker than an F40, I see. That was about eight and a half. I think. Wow. The other th little thing it's got up its sleeve compared to the previous generation active roll control um, that was introduced on the Bentayga uh, previous generation Cotter GT had normal anti-roll bars this has a 48 volt system and active roll so it really controls the road but when I'm in the, this sort of mode the downside of super stiff roll um, anti-roll bars is it had a jiggly effect on the suspension this can mean that the suspension can act normally and it isn't compromised by stiff anti-roll bars so it's a confused car. Where is this car? Is it a luxury car? Is it a race car? What? I think it's all changed since the car was first introduced. Who would have thought we'd see a, a, a Bentley at racing at GT3 level? But there is a, a continent, new Continental GT race car that was of the previous version. There is of this one. Never thought I'd see that. So this car has to, it plays that role, that dynamic role, and that's its sort of ace card. I think that's why it always sold so well in the past, because it could do the luxury and it could do the dynamic. It could shock with its performance, and this one certainly shocks. This, this should not, at this weight, behave like this through these bends. 2.2 ton car. 
doesn't want to understeer. God, that feels sharp. Hasn't got rear steer like some cars have in this class. And that is a heavy unit at the front, but those active anti roll parts really work and that suspension. That, I've got it in sport, so it's a stiffer sprung, but it dealt with that compression very well. Those brakes are working mighty hard, aren't they? The uh, 420 um, mil front disc, steel front disc, they're the biggest brakes fitted to a road car. 10 pot calipers, 10 count them. That is mighty caliper on it. Six pot at the rear even. Yeah, well, what do we make of this car? Well, when it arrived, I was ready to dismiss it. I thought it's overweight. W12 engine, never particularly liked the W12 engine. V8 um, Continental previous version, that showed the, its dynamic um, ability, it was better than a W12. So I'm sort of ready to dismiss this. Having lived with it, it's a different story. This is, I'm pretty sure, the Conti GT of choice. The engine, somehow, by doing the firing order, by cylinder deactivation, the old crazy fuel consumption is gone. We used to struggle to do 2021 before, um, even at cruising. I went down to Goodwood in this car yesterday, 28.1 mpg on the way down. I thought that's ridiculous. So on the way back, I pressed a bit harder and got home and was shot to 28.5 mpg. What that means is there's an over 400 mile range for the 90 litre tank. That's a big change from previous version dynamically moving that engine back and then this um, split in power the fact it's rear and then goes to the front has given it a new character those anti-roll bars there's a dynamic class to this car that wasn't there in the previous version so yeah I really like it only other downside size a bit more road noise I would like but that seems to be typical of this class the size of tires we're getting to but it's very well insulated I thought in this class I wanted the DB11. I like the snarl of the DB11. That's always been a Christmas this W12. It has a gruff voice. It doesn't sound like a um, 12 cylinder, but it delivers the horsepower. And over the DB11, the big change is how it makes you feel when you step inside. It's compromised the DB11 interior. This isn't compromised in any way. This is world class interior. I'd actually say it probably leads the world. Other cars you consider in this class are the um, Rolls-Royce Rafe, perhaps, or the Ferrari um, Lusso. They're just, they're more money. Rolls-Royce Rafe, I like that. If you want the rear space, it's got that. So if that's important to you, probably choose that car. But it's more expensive by about 50, 60,000, <laughs> so quite a lot. Ferrari FF, very special car, more space. But this one, 159,000, for what it delivers, this is supercar performance, world-class interior and luxury. I think they've got an absolute hit on their hands with this car at Bentley. Um, maybe this sector isn't the most popular now, but this is the definitive sport GT cruiser that out there at the moment. And it's got this extra dynamic with this new model. So, yeah, top job, Bentley. Excellent car. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.